Hey everyone, please subscribe to my channel. Please like, share and subscribe. Hit that notification bell to let you know when I have uploaded new videos. Thank you. So, to last night news broke of John Warden uh, potentially leaving Transformers. And I, I have to I'll be honest on this one. I'm really, really um, saddened by this. I think John has been absolutely fantastic for Transformers over the last number of years. And we'll see with the credits that he has later in this video that he's just been an absolute cornerstone in transformers and re in, in my opinion reinvigorating the lion uh, he's you know he's up there for me now as well as Aaron Ar archer like this guy has really really reinvented the brand he's brought things back that people really wanted to see uh he comes across as a really diehard fan and I'm, i have to say I'm, I'm genuinely upset that he's going to be leaving transformers it's um it, it's a uh, it's a strange feeling um, when you see someone who has so much love and dedication towards the brand and that they're going to move on. But we'll get into that in a in a short sec. So John Warden is a design manager in the Transformers franchise of Hasbro. In addition to working on Trilling 30 and Age of Extinction, he was the design lead on Combiner Wars. So Combiner Wars were something that fans wanted for a long time. They really wanted the Combiners back to make a comeback. And he was instrumental in, in bringing all of the combiners really to the table which was brilliant and he, he genuinely did listen to fans so these are toys that john had a hand in design and so scrapnel and reflector uh, the insecticon so I, I actually enjoyed that toy i thought it was really good the voyager brainstorm like brainstorm was great uh roadbuster i loved that training toward the roadbuster skybite and whirl so whirl is one of those obscure characters that was in the comics that john decided look we'll we'll bring this guy in uh leader jeff Fire, again and we also have to credit the Japanese um, individuals that were also involved in the design of those toys as well. So a, a big credit to them too because those toys again are, are cornerstones for what came later in my opinion. Age of Extinction, so the robots in disguise, the, the one-step changers. Um, I, I, I suppose they were kind of a little bit hit and miss. You know, some people liked them. It was I think it was a gimmick that Hasbro tried out. It didn't it obviously sold because they still kind of continued them in a way. So you have your Generation Series M4, you have Deluxe Class Autobot Drift, uh, a nice figure in my opinion that's just been used as well too for the Studio Series line, so I mean clearly highly thought of and they obviously didn't think that they could approve on that design too much. Uh, Bumblebee, Crosshair, so Crosshair has had an incredibly difficult design in that he actually had a trench coat in Robot Mode and in my opinion they've really pulled off Crosshairs really nicely. High Octane, Bumblebee, Hot Shot, Lockdown. So Lockdown was one of those funny toys as well too. That was a difficult one to translate due to the way he looked in the movie. Voyager Class Autobot Drift. That was a helicopter. More of a repaint. Autobot Hound. So again, Hound had a really odd look when he transformed. So I know with the movies that they try to get the concept art. And sometimes the concept art doesn't actually reflect what's in the final form of the film. Evasion Mode Optimus Prime. Again, I think they did a fantastic job there of translating that. Because... In the first couple of movies, Optimus had a very specific look, and the invasion mode that he had a flat nose truck, which was totally different from what he had before. So to transform him into something that looked like what he did in the previous movies when he transformed in Age of Extinction was really impressive, in my opinion. Galvatron, so Galvatron, I think that was an unfair one to give to to give Hasbro really because they just basically cube form turned into the kind of Lego and transformed. So that was a difficult one, in my opinion. And later class Grimlock, I, lo I love that uh, Grimlock, to be honest. So generation your combiner wars here you can see the, the the amount of individuals that he had here that he worked on uh, and i have to say there's there's not really a bad bot in the bunch in my opinion i think they're all really really great and the the big one for me was devastator i absolutely loved devastator um just a really fun figure it was enormous great to see devastator return and the love that was shown to him was really interesting, in my opinion. Uh, as far as I know, I think John knew of or had some hand, I think, in Titan Class Metroplex. So, John, I think one of the biggest legacies that John will have will be he was really instrumental in bringing the Titan Class into into play. And we'll see in a moment as well why. Uh, we've Titan's Return. So, there was a vote for that one. And we can see all of this now. Headmasters. Headmasters wouldn't personally be my preference, to be honest. Um, I just... It's just not for me, and I mean, that's okay. Some things are for some people, some things are not. So, I think what's important, what John did was, with, Titan with Titan's Return, he introduced this play pattern that you could swap heads and stuff, and then also as well have 
this idea that went forward and, and had bases. So he had Fortress Maximus with Cerebros and Emissary. So it was interesting to see that with those he had Electronics with Cerebros and Cerebros did talk. Um, then we, because we had Fortress Maximus was actually uh, a fan voted character if I remember correctly. And then Triptychon I think was another fan voted character. So Triptychon came then the following year. So two really nice figures. I think Triptychon had some early issues with the hips that broke but you know i suppose lighter versions of that improved but yeah fortress maximus is a is a great toy and it turns into a brilliant base and brilliant robot mode in my opinion and then the fact that it's a dual headmaster as well too is is a cool thing in and of itself uh, even though headmaster would be my biggest uh like or want i still buff fortress maximus and i love Triptychon. um Next then we have the last night, the premiere edition. So I think this is kind of, in my opinion, this was the the genesis, the beginning of the studio series line. I think they tried out and seen what they could do with this premiere edition stuff with a little bit better paint and a little bit better looking boxes. And I think that's what evolved then into the studio series line. So we've Drift, uh, we've Barricade. That Barricade's toy is phenomenal in my opinion. Uh, Crosshairs, Decepticon, Berserk, I really like that one. Dinobots. Dinobot Slash, Dinobot Slug, Steelbane. I like Steelbane, even though um, he didn't appear in the movie. We've got Strife, Voyager Class, Autobot Hound. So, uh, Hound was another difficult one to do again because he changed forms between movies. So, I think that that's a, a tough one to, to start up. Uh, Leader Class, Dragonstorm. I like Dragon, Dragonstorm a lot. Uh, Voyager Class, Scorn, I think for me, was probably my favourite part of the line to have the Spinosaurus Transformer. Uh, in a larger scale it's, it's great to see those dinobots become uh bigger scales rather than having them smaller or, or just stuck to deluxe classes which is way out of scale so we we'll come on here and we we'll look then we've generations power to prime so another thing that john will be remembered for really would be play patterns that the result he involved gimmicks in the lines which i think was a great idea and it harkens back to what aaron aaron archer did with uh the unicron trilogy so the tree three parts of that trilogy had some sort of gimmick to it like the transforming stuff is is a gimmick in itself but to ha add on to it as well i think brings added want and a difference to it so we see all the prime masters here the deluxes we brought jazz in we have the dinobots uh who were combiners then and um, because a lot of people requested that particularly because they appeared that way in one of the idw comics as far as i know it was either idw or dreamwave one or the other um and then we see then we had the leader, leader class evolution pack so this was an interesting idea and in that they had kind of and i thought at the time it was a bit of a missed opportunity that they didn't use star cyber could because star cyber was a smaller character that could kind of power up and put on a suit a mech suit and evolve basically into a bigger stronger um transformer so i was surprised that they skipped out on him but i don't know what 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 the plan is for him in the future Titan class, we had Predator King, so another combiner, uh, another one that a lot of people really wanted, um, and he's absolutely fearsome looking. The improved, the, the interesting thing as well too is John didn't really stay in one lane. He definitely improved as he went along. Like a lot of people had issue with the fists and the feet of the combiner war. So as it went on, John and his team definitely improved on that. And with Predator King, with the hands and the feet for sure, they were a, a significant improvement over over what had come before. So we see his convention appearances, and I have to say, every time you see him at a convention, or every time we've seen him at a convention, he j he just looked hyped, and it was great to see. Like he looked like, as excited as as we would be if we were in the room, and it is brilliant to see that someone that's in, involved at the line cares so much. So we have him from BotCon 2014. So I mean, that's going way back to Toy Fair to 2020, and that seems to be our last appearance, really, of John. Uh, in charge of transformers so we're just going to look at a couple of notes here and i think there's something of interest really particularly as we read on so prior to transformers john worked on star wars including episode one and two and 300 boba fett shrek 2 rave master and all pokemon toys from 2000 to 2005 and was a co-signee on a patent for toy game convergence using pokemon think chip plus figure so again like innovative stuff here He's probably best known to Hasbro fans as the lead designer on all G.I. Joe figures and vehicles from 2006-2013. Sigma 6, 25th anniversary, Rise of Cobra movie toys, I really enjoyed those. Pursuit of Cobra, Cobra sorry, including original designs, 
Shadow Tracker, Jungle Viper, Zombie Viper, and Data Viper. So the Zombie Viper is absolutely outrageous looking. It's fantastic. 30th anniversary and Retaliation movie figures. So I like the Retaliation figures as well too. The, the, some of the likenesses on them are really, really good. Some of the 50th anniversary figures were also based on his concept Vault Walk. So he, he's big into you know bringing characters back that are obscure characters into the mix, which really definitely adds to these brands i think at joe con 2011 warden and rick alvarez participated in a treasure from the hasbro archives panel which revealed that a robot panther modeled on Br ravage was intended for release with an unproduced rise of cobra arctic baroness figure that's what have been so cool while warden consistently denied that it was going to be actually ravage the use of ravage design cues was intentional Neither the Baroness nor the Robot Panther were tilled, with the Panther and the Photo being the only one in existence. His favourite Transformers are Roadbuster, so we got him in Trilling Torty. We've also gotten him in the Studio Series line, um, and I'm surprised actually to see that he didn't appear in the War for Cybertron trailer just yet. Uh, I would love to see him return in that now. I, I love Roadbuster as a character, and it's such a cool one now. Whirl, no surprise there because it was one of the early ones that he had to got uh, a go on. Skylinks, he had two cracks at Skylinks, so it's clear to see that he really likes Skylinks. So he had the Combiner War of Skylinks, um, good figure, I really enjoyed it. And then the Commander Class one, so this Commander Class was introduced under John's tenure as well too, and I think it's a really good idea that it's a bigger character than a leader class. And it opens up that price point then as well too, for larger characters to come along that are bigger than leaders, but also our fan favorite character so skylinks it's clear to see i think that commander skylinks is fantastic and i think most importantly as well too here is jeff Ware. so jeff Ware was the force in the commander class and was really an excellent figure he has so much playability with him in terms of he can he can be a, a drop ship for autobots or decepticons and that's a big factor itself that he has a flip chain symbol that you can recreate what was happening in g1 where jeff Ware switched sides he also comes up with a power up mode as well too which is just insane and i think that's just it's so cool so the the last point that we're seeing here now i think is probably the interesting one and, and it's going to factor into what john is potentially going to be doing and again i wish him all the best with what he's going to do here and i think this is a brand that really needs some love because i think in previous shows it has it's kind of been handled by people that i'm not sure really knew much about the brand or didn't really have an awful lot of love for it like the live stream of um the power rangers brand not too long ago it was a two minute pre-record or two to four minute pre-recorded clip whereas you're seeing hour-long live streams for the likes of star wars and marvel i mean power rangers there is that is hasbro's brand and now it should be really getting a lot of focus so that Hasbro can move on in the future and say, right, we're going to focus on Transformers, Power Rangers and G.I. Joe. And if we don't have the license for Marvel and Star Wars, that's OK, because they're eventually going to run out of product there on those uh, lines. And I think as things are progressing. So Warden even expresses interest for a potential crossover with Power Rangers. Yes, he's serious about this. This is something that really piqued my interest because I think... This is a good idea, and particularly because Hasbro have bought over the Power Rangers, it could open up serious stuff for the Zords. Uh, the compatibility also then, you know, Transformers bumping into Power Rangers, whether it be through an animated TV series or whether it be through a movie or whether it be through comics, I think would be a really good idea. And, it's a, you know, it's going to be interesting for a selling point what they're going to do there. Uh, as far as I know as well too, he's going to be also involved in Ghostbusters as well too, which is really, really cool because Ghostbusters is another line that I think can have a really big return particularly with the plasma series that they have now and i hope really ghostbusters does progress on with uh, paul rudd and film wolfhard and the other um characters that are going to be in this new movie so i think ultimately i, I just want to say like a big thanks to john for what he's done over the last number of years he, he's been absolutely phenomenal and when you see the, the body of work that he's done it's actually a sad day that he's going to be leaving transformers in my opinion because he's just shown so much heart and he's shown so much love to the brand and it's very hard to get those type of people i think into these positions i would certainly hope that whoever replaces him at, at transformers and hasbro is going to bring the same love the same enthusiasm and the same i suppose fan pleasing crowd pleasing audience pleasing uh transformers i really really do we look like we're moving into the beast war section of things which is interesting to see i hope john is going to have some sort of hand conti uh, continue to have some sort of hand with what happens with transformers going far uh, forward uh, the likes of hot rod and rodimus prime I, there's been leaked listings of them so i hope john was involved with them and i, I know john himself had said that he would like to have another go at metroplex so 
to scale with the new titans i think that would be absolutely wonderful to see and i hope john does have a hand in metroplex and i think a crowning achievement for john and maybe this is his decision to have moved on but he's been involved at the haslab unicron and it looks absolutely phenomenal it's given you know the planet mode for it looks unbelievable and i know uh, Hasbro are working with the car designers on that as well too but it just looks absolutely brilliant I backed it straight away and I'm very excited to see what comes with it um, and I'm ex excited to have it in my collection but I think that was John's crown achievement so I mean it's kind of like leave on, I think it maybe it might be his opinion that he's leaving on a win you know he's he's not leaving on a loss or people saying oh that wasn't great he's leaving on a very very high note um, and again like I'd say it, it's I suppose as a Transformers fan and particularly as a G1 fan and oh, you know, I love the movies also. I come into that weird category of I love the movies and I also love Beast Wars and I love G1. I have love for it all and animated as well too particularly. that it's, it's To me it's a sad day to see John moving on from the brand and like I said I just hope whoever picks it up from him is just as enthusiastic and just as loving of the brand. Anyway, thanks for liking this video, thanks for sharing it, and thanks for subscribing to this ch uh, channel. I hope you continue to do so, and I will talk to you later. Best of luck, John.